Hey friends, what's up? I thought the fun topic for today's video will be making a custom MarkDoc renderer for Svelte. And you probably have two questions. First, what is MarkDoc and second, what is a renderer? So let me answer the first question. MarkDoc is a powerful, flexible, markdown-based authoring framework. This is something that came out of Stripe based on their documentation. It's a lot more powerful than the base markdowns. For example, here we can take the title from our front matter here. You can also have functions, you can have partials and etc. And you can also include swell components and etc. So for example, here, if we inspect this element, you can see this thingy here. Let me just see it here. So here is H1. So you can see how this is overview here. We can even change or add attributes this way. We can say, for example, banana. And you're going to see is going to update this to banana. So this makes markdown more powerful. But today's video isn't actually going to be on how to use the markdog, but it's just going to be on how to make a custom renderer. All right, so for example, if we go to the markdog docs, you can see you can do a bunch of things. So you can specify custom nodes to override these custom elements, custom tags, attributes. You can use variables. You can use functions. And this is the part I'm interested in. So for example, we can create a custom Svelte renderer. So this gives us a great opportunity or excuse to use some special Svelte elements. So here they walk you through an example. And in this case, they have a React example. So for example, here, Markdog has this thing renderers.react. In this case, usually we're going to use .html. But in our case, we actually going to return the children, which is just a function. So now we can use Svelte to loop over those elements. We can output things. So whatever we want, including custom elements, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that, which is really cool. And let me just see, is it here? Yeah, so we can see here at the HTML. So this is the default thing that you're going to use. So basically doing that, you can have custom widgets on your site. For example, like MDN has the REPL, so you can include something like this on your site, maybe, which is a really awesome use case for that. And also what I really love about Marco, so this was actually even before I knew about Marco, you can see how it uses these like template strings. This is actually the same thing I use on my blog, but of course I'm not using a custom render. I just have these things that I search and replace. So let me just show you. So for example, I have an embed video image and for YouTube because I don't want to type those things out and I also don't want to create a snippet. I just want to find this in the blog post and I want to replace them. So you can see it's going to replace the embed with an iframe and I just pass whatever I have from the regex, right? And this is something really cool that I use on my site and it's really awesome. And then I just use Unified. So I just raw dog the markdown. No problem. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And yeah, that's basically it. All right. So I know there's going to be at least one person that's going to be like, why are you doing all of this work where you can just use Astro? Listen, some of us don't want to be framework Andes and they actually want to learn how things work, right? Okay. So... <laughs> That's great. But in case if you just want something get working, you already have all of these packages done for you. Here is a package Markdoc render for Svelte. You can install this. Boom. Get started. Now you can use Markdoc easy peasy lemon squeezy. Here is an even better one. So here is a Markdoc preprocessor. Boom. So now you can install this. You can import it. You can use this as MD Swex, right? Maybe you're familiar with that. So now you can create a plus page.markdoc file. And now inside of here, you can include markdown and even Svelte components, I think. So yeah, these are options that are always available to you. But the purpose of this channel is to learn, right? So let's learn something. All right, cool beans, man. So we can just close this. And here I have a simple markdown post. And here is just a simple Svelte project I have set up. So if you want to set up some packages that I already have installed, you can do that if you want to follow along. But of course, all of the links are going to be in the description, as I said. All right, cool. So here's just a simple post, the same thing they have on their side here. I'm just using front matter title. I'm going to show you how I got that. And here I have this callout component and counter component, which we're going to look at in a second, right? So this is basically where the custom renderer comes in. We cannot only change these elements like headings and etc. We can use a custom renderer to render custom components. And here I have just this endpoint page server. So here I have the slug, right? And nothing special, just like a regular Markdown blog. I'm just using Node to read the file. Then I'm extracting the front matter. So here I get the post. Then we use Markdoc. So we get this AST from Markdoc. Then we just pass it to the transform. So we get the content. So here I have this variable inside front matter. So I say get front matter. Then I just pull the front matter. And now I can use this as variables inside my Markdown, right? So that's how that works. And here I have this tag. So here you can include your components. Again, if you want to learn more how that works, you can just read the Markdog documentation. But yeah, here just have this callout. So we can render callout. This has some attributes, type string. By default, it's note. And here for the counter, I'm just simply including this counter component, which I'm going to show you in a minute when we get to that part. And basically, that's really how simple that is. So now we have all of that. And now we just return markdog.renderers.html, right? 
and then we get the content we pass the content right and then in our load function we're just going to say hey html await markdown to html boom bam thank you ma'am now we're going to get it here over the props that's basically it so now we can just use at html and we can render this post and that's basically it it works beautifully but in the next step we're actually going to look how we can return the children loop over them and render custom elements okay so let's go back to our code and in this case let me just remove this since you're not going to need this and now let me just go back to our endpoint and instead of returning the html we can return the content so let me actually show you what this is so basically there are a couple of things on this content so let me just console log content and you're going to see what i'm talking about of course the output is going to be in our terminal because this is the backend part of circuit so now we can save it and we're going to see the output so if i scroll to the top you're going to see here is this tag the first one is article right so let me show it to you and now we have attributes and then you have some children here and now you can see how we can render whatever we want so we get these things back so we get h1 p tags and etc and the other things which are just a string and we can say oh okay if this thing is that for example for example if the title is h1 then we can render a h1 element and so on and then we also get back the attributes and some other things so you can see here is the callout component here is the counter component so this is just a string and we're going to recognize this in the cell component and just render whatever we want and let me also show you a pro tip you might be used to using console there and you might wonder okay what is changed you can see how we have some objects that aren't unfolded here so here is the actual pro tip so you can pass another parameter here to the options and let me just say we can pass it what was it i forgot the name think it was def and you can just specify a def just say eight for fun so we can just say save and now we're going to see when this logs out you're going to see you're going to get a lot more information so you don't have to drill yourself in these objects and etc you can just specify the devs using console.dir and you can just log more things so we're going to see here we have some more things we have children so now we can see this is just text node so we're going to do something based on that if that's a text node but you're going to see we're going to run into one problem if we do this right now. So let me just collapse the terminal. So we actually just want to return instead of the HTML, we just want to return the children and then we're going to take over and do whatever we want, right? We are the boss here, right? So we're going to say return content children and then here we can just say children, but you're going to see if we save this and we should also probably rename this component because it doesn't make sense more than to HTML anymore, but whatever, we can just say markdoc let's just be consistent cool like that but you're going to see when we save this and we go here we get an internal error so now when we open our terminal again this happens in a circuit oof and this always look nasty and it says data return from load while rendering slug is not serializable you cannot stringify arbitrary non plain old objects and basically this is just a lot saying hey you're returning this some weird thing when i'm expecting a string and i really don't know how to deal with this so basically to circumvent that we can just json stringify this so now we can just take this and let's say json stringify now we can just pass whatever we had before and i don't want to type this so i'm just going to say ignore it leaves me alone boom now we get this now we can return children so this is a string and then we can parse it back here so if we go back to our component let me just use my favorite snippet of all time i can just say pre and now we can log out this data right and we're going to see this data children so let's just say data children because there's a prop that we return and even if i log this out you're going to see we're going to get this curious thing right so that's basically the same thing that we got before right we can say json parse let's take the children boom now we can see we get back the same thing so the exact same thing that we saw in our terminal so now we can pass this to another component and then we can do whatever we want right Okay, so next let's create the markdoc renderer component. So I'm going to go inside source, lib, here I have this markdoc folder with some components which are going to collapse right now. So inside markdoc, I'm going to create renderer.swelt and that's basically it. So now let's see if this works. We're going to output high and let's import this component back here. So I'm going to say import markdoc renderer from, we're going to say lib markdoc renderer. That's basically it. So now we can delete all of that. Let's use our component, markdoc renderer. The only thing we have to do is pass children. We're going to say children equal. We have to use json parse. We're going to say data.children. All right, cool. Let's save this. And now we output high here. So let's see if that works. Okay, no errors. Beautiful. Let's create a script tag. And then we're going to get the children. Let's say children. 
crops. That's it. Cool. So now let's log out the children. And then you're going to see we have everything that we need. So let's open the developer tools. And here I can open this array of our children. And here you can see all of our children are here. And how beautiful is this, friends? All right, so now we can loop over these children and conditionally render our elements. Okay, but before we do that, I'm actually going to create a components object. And you can use a map, whatever you want. I'm going to say cons components. And we're going to have two components here. We're going to have callout and counter. So callout and counter. And of course, you should spell this properly. Callout. And let's just import this. So we can say import callout from components callout. And then I'm going to copy this line over going to say counter and that's basically it so now we have these components that we can check for and render them and of course you might do something like this for example let's create an each loop so now we can say children as child and now you might be thinking okay we're going to say if here and then we're going to say again we need to look at the shape of our object we're going to see it has name so you might be thinking okay if child name equals h1 then do something but doing this is very tedious. Instead of doing that, you're going to use special Svelte elements. So let me just remove this. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to also say this should be any, so I'm not bothered. And let me just actually show you in the Svelte tutorial. So the first one we're going to use, actually one of them is going to be Svelte self. So when you need to do something recursively, like call the function again, which is going to be really useful, we're going to see why in a second. So basically, if I reset this, right, you're going to see here in this folder, here we can't really loop over these folders, but we can invoke this component again if we solve it. So again, you can see Svelte self, and now we can pass it the file. You can pass it its own properties and etc. So now inside of here, we're going to recursively use this special Svelte element. And another one that we're going to use is going to be Svelte element. So here in this example, this is basically what I showed you a second ago. Here, if we say reset, we can say if selected equals h1, then we can do something, but this is really tedious. So instead of doing that, if I solve this, we're going to get Svelte element, this equals selected. So now this is going to be really simple. So now when we have a H1, it's going to be a H1, H2, outputs H2, H3, and so on. Paragraph and the best element, in my opinion, marquee. Okay, so how cool is this, friends? We can go back to our example here. So now we can do something special here. And let me just make space so we can see what's going on. So the first thing we're going to check if this is a special swell component we should render. So let's just say if, and now we can say components and we can check for it by saying child name. Okay, so we're going to look into this object. If this exists, then we're going to render this. And how can we do that? Well, now we're going to use the special swell component. And let's just complete it like this. So we can pass this. And what is the component going to be in this case? Well, it's really simple. It's going to be the same components. We're going to access it using child name. And that should be easy like that. And then we can also spread the other attributes if it has it. So now we can pass it an object. We can say child attributes. And then in this case, if it has more children, so if we go here to call out, for example, it has some other children that it has to render. So now we can recursively call this function and do the same thing again, right? So let me just really show you. So we can go here and let's use another special Svelte element. So we can use Svelte self. Cool. Let's just self close it. And then we're going to pass it the same prop, which is going to be children. And that is child.children. All right, cool. So let's save this and we should get no error. So we're going to see we get this call out and we get our counter component, which we can already use. And how cool is that, friends? And the reason we're not seeing anything here because we're actually not rendering any text. So we need to handle that case, which we're going to do in a second, right? If you look here. Okay, so let's go back here. And here, this is just a TypeScript error. You can ignore it. Actually, it's really obnoxious. So let's just quickly type this. We can say record, which is a utility type. And let's just say the key is going to be a string and component type, which we can import from self. Okay, cool. So now it's not going to complain. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy like that, friends. Okay, so if this isn't a special Svelte component that we want to render, actually, let's just continue with else, and then we can close it like this. Okay, so now we're talking about our P tags, H1s, and etc. So now we can just use a regular Svelte element. So now let's say Svelte colon element, like this, and now we can just pass what we want to render. So now we can say this, what child name. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy like that, friends. And of course, we're also going to spread the attributes. Child attributes that's basically it and now we're actually going to do the same thing inside of here if this has more children we're going to recursively call this component 
cool so now let's say self let's auto close this and we're going to pass it the children again child dot children so let's save this and we should see we have more things but again we're not actually taking into account the text so actually this is really something cool that i want to show you so here we're logging out these children so we're going to actually see how this component reruns right so let me actually just refresh this so we can understand what's going on so as you can see here it renders the first time again we get all of these things and now we're recursively calling this function. So now we get what is markdoc. So now we can check, okay, does this have more children, etc. And then we have some other nodes which are text and etc. And then we just loop over this, calling it recursively and doing everything that we need, right? So we can actually finish this off very easily. We can just go here and we just need to include the last case. So we're going to say if type of child equals a string. And then we're just going to render a child. Nothing to it. Boom. Let's just save this. And now we're going to see everything works. So let me just hide this. Now we're going to see we get a special component here because now we're actually taking into account the text. So now everything works as expected, right? All right, friends. So that's it. And I hope you learned a lot of things because the focus wasn't on learning how to use Marduk, but we actually took this just as an excuse to learn about this awesome custom Svelte elements and how to recurse over components in Svelte and etc so now we have a bigger arsenal you can use in your day-to-day -day work and of course you learned what a custom renderer is which is really a term that applies to anything in web development you're going to see a bunch of markdown libraries have this concept of a custom renderer and etc and now you actually know what it means and how you can implement one yourself all right so if you like what you've seen don't forget to like and subscribe and you can also support me by becoming a patron thank you for watching and catch you in the next one peace